Well, my friends, it is so great to see you again and to create another video from St. Anne's here in Toronto. My name is Don Paris and, and I am the parish priest here and pastor. And it is a delight to be able to do another video for you. My friends, in a couple days, we will celebrate Ash Wednesday and we will begin our annual journey through Lent. Now, Ash Wednesday, as with so many other occasions in Lent, is deeply symbolic. It has lots of images in it. And in a moment, I'm going to talk a little bit about those images and what we do. But first, I thought I'd maybe share with you a little bit about Lent and what Lent is about. Now, growing up when I was a child, I have to tell you, I hated Lent. <laughs> because Lent often meant, as a child, that we had to give up candy, we had to give up sweets, uh, we had to... It seemed everything became really somber. It became very serious. And for a long time, I think that's what people thought Lent was to be about. A time where you sort of lived a very minimalistic life as some sort of punishment, I guess you could say. However, that's not really necessarily the point of Lent. It's actually something much greater. The word Lent that we use in English actually is believed to come from an Anglo-Saxon word known for spring. And Lent is really that time in the church's year where we sort of clean out all the cobwebs, everything that may be filling our soul and our spirit and our body and preventing us from fully entering into relationship with God and each other. I don't know about you, but usually as spring comes around, I love to do a big house cleaning. It seems to make everything fresh, to renew everything. And that's really what Lent is for the church. Now, traditionally, we do, do, we do different practices during this time. For example, people are strongly encouraged to fast. Now, fasting could take on various different shapes and forms. It could be quite literal where you fast from food for a day or something like that. Or maybe you fast from certain foods. The idea isn't so much of a punishment, but rather to maybe recenter ourselves, to say, what things are becoming a distraction for me in my life? I don't know about you, but I know I have certain things. I have certain guilty pleasures that, quite frankly, I could really do well without them for a while. Sometimes I become too focused on those things. And so Lent is a great opportunity to sort of recenter ourselves and to reground ourselves in relationship with God and each other. Now, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday. And beside me here, and we'll take a look at this in a moment, I have a little table here with some of the images that we have for Lent. The first one you'll notice is we have some dried palm branches. Now you might be wondering, why are we keeping these awful looking dried palm branches? Actually, I don't think they're so bad looking, but why are we keeping these palm branches? The reason is, is the branches have been blessed last year on Palm Sunday. And traditionally, any item that's been blessed is burned when it is no longer used. Now, the interesting thing about palm branches is that the last Sunday before Ash Wednesday is traditionally the day when people are invited to bring their palm branches, their, their old palm branches, to the church, to give them back to the church, and the priest or the altar guild takes them and then burns them. And these palms then become the ashes that we use on Palm, or on Ash Wednesday. In fact, you see I have a little jar there, or a plate there, which is a little leftover ash from last year's Ash Wednesday. So you're encouraged always to bring your old palm branches and we will burn them, and those ashes will become what we use on Ash Wednesday. It's sort of a beautiful cycle, I think, in the sense that once it sort of reflects life in a way that something that was living has now died, but is being born again into something new. Really very much a deep theme of Lent. Now, ash. Why do we use ash to begin our Lenten journey? 
Now, ash is the prayer that we say during the administration of ashes when the priest places them on your forehead with his thumb or her thumb and makes the sign of the cross on the forehead with them. The minister will say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now this recalls the story of Genesis. It recalls creation. It actually recalls life in general. That all things that are born ultimately do die and return from which they came. Now that may seem a little morbid to us, but there's actually a beauty here. It's something much some deeply symbolic, very, very deeply symbolic. What it's a reminder to us is to return to our roots. In a sense, you could say, it reminds us to be humble, to be earthy, to be grounded in this world. And so the minister, when they put these ashes on your head, says to you, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The minister is reminding you, look, get rid of all that extraneous stuff in your life, all that prevents you from really loving God and each other. Remember who you are. Remember that God created you. And not only that God created you, but that God formed you from the earth, created you, fashioned you, so that you can be in love and service to others. So that little gesture, that little sign of placing ash on the forehead is a reminder of that. Now in some places, I get a little interesting historical fact here. Ashes haven't always been put on the forehead. In fact, if you still go to Rome and many parts of Europe, the ash is actually not put on the forehead, but rather is dumped on top of a person, person's head. In fact, if you see the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, when he does Ash Wednesday, the Pope will actually lean over and a cardinal will take ash and dump it over his head. And it's a wonderful gesture, I think much more symbolic than our practice of signing on the forehead. It's really evoking that whole image that you and I are from the earth and to the earth we shall return. That we have a special relationship to the earth, to creation, and then ultimately we are to give ourselves back to that creation, back to God, and to remind ourselves from where we came. And there's another symbol that you'll notice with not only Ash Wednesday, but with Lent in general. The colors of the season change. On Ash Wednesday, the priest no longer wears green, which in the West, in Western Christianity, traditionally has been a symbol of life, new life. The priest will now wear purple. And on the table here, I have one of my purple stoles, quite beautiful, and it evokes some of this imagery because you got flowers on it as well. Purple is an interesting color because it's often signified for Lent and for penance, but it can also evoke royalty. In ancient times, purple was the color of royals. Emperors, kings, rulers, they all wore purple. And one of the reasons why we wear purple, or why I would suggest we wear purple, is to remind us of our royal nature, that we are called to be a holy people, a kingly people, and that we are to rule over sin and injustice. And so this simple color evokes that imagery that it's not just simply a penitential time, but that we are to take command over our own sinfulness. So my friends, these are just a few of the images for Ash Wednesday and for Lent. I invite you to join us this Ash Wednesday. We'll celebrate Eucharist and the imposition of ashes at 7.30 here in this wonderful church with our choir. And we will begin our Lenten journey. And one final little note before I go, and one other fun fact, and maybe I'll quiz you on this. In many parts of the world, they don't actually call the season Lent, but they actually name it for the days that we count down to Easter. And here's where the fun fact comes in. Sundays are not a part of Lent. Sundays are Sundays in the season of Lent. Sunday is never a penitential day. It is always a day of the resurrection. 
So when we count down to Easter, you'll notice that it seems to be more than 40 days before Easter when we start. Well, the reason for that is Sundays are not counted among the days to Easter. In fact, Lent ends with Monday, Thursday, when we begin the Holy Trium. So my friends, join us on Ash Wednesday at 7.30. And also, I encourage you to visit our website for further information about Lent and Holy Week and Easter. And I really do welcome you to St. Anne's. God bless you, and God keep you always. Take care.